Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope Late Night Edition here. It's uh, about 10.42 p.m. local time. We're right here live broadcasting from the Greenbrier Village. You're probably watching on Facebook or YouTube or many of the watch parties that we have going on around the metro right now. We'd like to welcome everybody here, and thank you for joining us here at the Daily Dose of Hope. Now, what is the Daily Dose of Hope? It's a place that you can come to, that you can learn about God's Word. You can learn who Jesus Christ is, who God the Father is, who God the Holy Spirit is. But also, we want to be able to look into the God's Word every day for inspiration and for hope. That's the truth that we have available to us found in those 66 books known as the Holy Bible. So this evening, what we'd like to do is ask you to open your Bible to Matthew chapter 2. And we're going to go back um, to Jesus in the manger, and we're going to examine what happens to Jesus after he's born. Okay, so right after the resurrection, I'm sorry, right after the birth of Jesus, um, the family has to leave suddenly, and we'll get into that tonight. So I'm titling this, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus the Christ Travel. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a majestic Father. Your name is above all other names. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing and your care and your guidance. We pray, Lord, that right now as we uh, share the word of God with all the listeners and all the people that are viewing this right now, Lord, and those that will view it in the future, Lord, that there would be hope and inspiration for each person. And Lord, that as we start a new year, 2021, we look to this year with hope. We look to this year with an opportunity for better. And we pray, Lord, as we hear this story of J Jesus, his mother and his father, traveling to Egypt, we look into this story for the word obedient and obedience. So thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit so we could understand this word clearly. And we love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Okay, as I'm watching this um, on my screen, uh, it looks as though maybe we have a little bit of a lag time. So that might be because of the internet. Um, I'm not quite sure what what the situation is here. Um, but if you are on our chat, you can send me a message and let me know if there's a little bit of a lag time. In fact, I, I think I can look on mine right now. Yeah, it looks like my... It looks like my voice is a lot slower than what's coming out of my mouth. So we're having a little bit of difficulty. Okay, well, it's good enough. I'm, I'm not going to end the broadcast for that. People get the same message. And we'll just move forward. Okay, so let's take out our Bibles. Go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 to 15. Mary, Joseph, and Jesus the Christ travel. And this is, again, found in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. We've been through part of this already. This is the story of Jesus' birth. But now, you know that after the Magi visited Jesus... Uh, and by the way, we remember, if you remember when I broadcast this a few weeks ago, we are not sure when those three wise men, we don't even know if they're three wise men. They might be five. They might be six. We don't know how many there were. But tradition says it's three because of the three gifts, the gold, the mirth, and the frankincense, right? You remember that? Well, remember, those three get a dream. After they visited Jesus and gave him gifts, the first gifts uh, by a by a person to Jesus um, at Christmas on that day. Perhaps that was that day when he was born. Perhaps it was many, many days after. Some people think it might have even been a couple years after. But that doesn't really matter at this point in time. We know that the three wise men 
were having a dream that night, and they were told by the angel of the Lord, some believe that's Gabriel, who visited Mary and Joseph earlier, and also um, we have the angel of the Lord shows up to the shepherds. Um, some people believe that might even be God in the form of an angel, okay? But again, we don't want to get too technical here for you, but we know that these three wise men have had a dream, and the dream told them, the angel of the Lord appeared to them in the dream, and he said, don't go back to Herod, go home. And we pick up the story from there. Now, when they departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Okay, so what do you have here? First, uh, we'll, we'll go through all three verses and then we'll come back. Verse 14, And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. Verse 15, And remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. Okay. So, what's going on here? First, now when they departed, the they is the wise men, the magi. Okay? Remember, they're the men, it could be three, it could be five, it could be six. Um, they're the men that came from the east, probably modern-day Iran, and they brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth, okay, to uh, the baby Jesus, to the family. And when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. So Joseph is sleeping, and he has a dream, and the angel of the Lord said to, G said to Joseph, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Okay, so how many of you remember this? How many of you remember this from maybe your pastor sharing this with you, or you remember it from a Bible teacher in the past? This is part of the story of Jesus' birth. Because as you know, one of the things that Herod, King Herod did was he sent the wise men to go find the baby Jesus. And he said because he wanted to go worship him, but he was actually lying to the Magi. He wanted the Magi to find the baby Jesus and then report back to him where the baby was. And in his mind, in Herod's mind, he wanted to kill the baby Jesus. Why? Because... This is a very odd, very diabolical, and a very brutal king. Of, uh, at that time, he was the king that was appointed, and he did not want anybody to uh, take over his throne. They say that uh, Herod, the, I think he was called Herod the Great, um, he was so paranoid that he would have members of his own family killed. So he wanted to kill the baby Jesus because he thought maybe the baby Jesus might take over his throne. So these three uh, leave and J Joseph gets this dream that he's supposed to rise and take the child and his mother Mary and flee to Egypt and remain there till I tell you. This is what the angel of the Lord says, remain there till I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. So the angel of the Lord tells Joseph everything he needs to know. Take the baby, take the mother, go to Egypt, and remain there until the angel of the Lord appears another time to tell him to go back to where they came from. And then he says something that's interesting. He says, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. So this angel of the Lord knows everything that Herod is thinking, and he knows everything that's going on in this situation. So again, 
If you're a person that questions um, things like, did Mary have divine power? Okay, well, let's look at that one first. There's a couple of questions here. Did Mary, do we have any proof that Mary had divine power? Okay, and in this passage, we see that she did not. Why? Because the angel of the Lord didn't appear to Mary. He appeared to Joseph, the father. Okay, and if Mary had divine power, you would think that Mary would just tell Joseph, hey, let's get out of here. Let's go to Egypt because they're looking for our son. But God did not send Mary to deliver that message to Joseph. He sent his angel called the angel of the Lord. Another thing that's interesting here is many people forget that Jesus was taken to Egypt. What was Egypt symbolic for? It was part of historically and biblically, it's the Exodus. That's where, where God, uh, you remember the story of Moses taking his people out of Egypt, out of chains, out of exile, and he uh, allows um, Moses to cross the Red Sea. You remember that, right? So imagine the Savior of the world who's just born is now going back to Egypt, okay? And this was not just, that is not just an interesting fact, but the fact that the baby Jesus, the Messiah of the world, is the only begotten son, would go to Jesus, would go to Egypt, is to fulfill Scripture, and I'm going to show you that a little later. So let's go to verse 14. And he rose, the he is Joseph, and Joseph rose, and he took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. Okay. So remember, the angel of the Lord just appears to Joseph, says, Joseph, you need to get out of town, take the mother, take the baby, go to Egypt, because Herod's about to try to kill the baby. And apparently, this is in a dream, apparently that woke Joseph up. I think it would wake you up too. It would wake me up for sure if I saw an angel of the Lord in my dream, and he told me in, in no uncertain terms, you need to leave now because your baby's in danger. And what does Joseph do? He obeys right away. He rose. He didn't wake up and say, hey, I better talk to Mary about this. I better get Mary's permission. Or I better discuss this with my, my in the synagogue. Is this really the angel of the Lord? Maybe I should pray about it. He didn't do any of that. You know what he did? He obeyed. He rose and he took the child and his mother by night immediately. And they departed to Egypt, okay? Verse 15, and they remained there until the death of Herod, okay? Some people believe that that might have been just a short period of time, okay? Um, incidentally, how did Mary, Joseph, and Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, travel to Egypt? several hundred miles away? How would they gather all their things from where they are in Bethlehem and go to Egypt? Well, guess what? Remember the three wise men? Remember the three magi? They gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold is more than likely how they afford the trip from Bethlehem to Egypt. God provided through those three magi, through the three wise men, or how many of our wise men there were, God provided for Jesus to travel to Egypt along with his mother, Joseph, and his, uh, excuse me, his father, Joseph, and his mother, Mary. So imagine God provided the gold so that they could pay for the trip. And they remained there until the death of Herod. And why did they do this? Why did God send them to Egypt? Why didn't he just send them to another part of Israel, Judea? Why didn't he have them go towards the border of what today is, is Palestine? Or, you know, why did he do that? Why didn't he send them up to what today is Lebanon? Because, it says right here in verse 15, this was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet Hosea. 
That's the prophet Hosea. By the prophet Hosea, out of Egypt I called my son. Let's look at that. Let's go to Hosea 11, verse 1. When Israel was, my, was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt I called my son. Now, this is not messianic prophecy like, for example, like Isaiah has messianic um, prophecy. This is called what we call pictorial prophecy. This is the picture of the Messiah. So this is what we call pictorial. This is what theologians call pictorial um, prophecy. Okay? We see a picture here. Okay? We see a picture. When Israel was a child, okay, um, that's supposed to be Jesus. I loved him. And out of, Jesus, out of Egypt, I called my son. Okay? So this is pictorial prophecy by the prophet Hosea. And this is why Matthew, in his gospel, says, and it was fulfilled, it was written so that it would fulfill, excuse me, and it was, this was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. He doesn't name the prophet, but every Jew that's listening to uh, Matthew's word or reading Matthew's word later would know that this is from the prophet Hosea who says, out of Egypt, I called my son. Now, isn't that interesting that all of this took place right after, sometime after the birth of Jesus and what happens? The, the angel of the Lord appears to the Magi. They don't go back to Herod. They go back to Iran. Joseph gets, has a dream, and he hears from the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord says, get out of here quickly. Go to Egypt. And by the way, God provides gold so there's enough money to travel to Egypt, stay in Egypt until the angel of the Lord tells them, to return and that return is dependent upon the death of Herod and tomorrow what we're going to do in the Hope Hill Sunday morning gathering is we're going to look in the book of Luke and we're going to pick up the story right there we're going to pick up the story of Joseph receiving another message from the angel of the Lord this time telling him where to return to and some of you have always wondered that. What happens to Jesus after the birth? We don't hear from him again until age 12. But we do know what he did during that time. He actually went to Egypt with his parents. And then an angel of the Lord appears to Joseph. And you'll have to tune in tomorrow to find out at the Hope Hill Sunday morning gathering. You'll be able to find out what the angel of the Lord says to Joseph, and how soon after that did they return, and where did they return to? All of these things are in Scripture, and that's why this is so great uh, when we get a chance to look into Scripture, because it almost reads like a history book, right? Sometimes when we slow down and we read the words carefully, and we slow down and take a look at context, we realize that this really is it's like an historical account of what happened to Jesus during the 33 and a half years that he was here on earth as a human being. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for this message of obedience. We're amazed, we're um, encouraged by Joseph. He listens to the angel of the Lord. He doesn't get scared. He listens to the angel of the Lord. He gathers his wife. He gathers his son. And they get on to Egypt. And he listens for the next message that will come from the angel of the Lord. Lord, this is a good example to us of obedience to you, Lord. He listened to exactly what you wanted him to do. Lord, help us to apply that to our life this weekend. Lord, as we're about to go into the Hope Heals Sunday morning gathering, I pray, Lord, that you give me the correct inspiration to preach tomorrow morning. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. Thank you for getting me healthy again. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing of my wife and my son. They keep me going. They keep me happy. They keep me smiling. Lord, I want to pray for everybody out there 
that um, wants to have a relationship. They want to have a relationship with you. They want to have a relationship with a man or a woman, or they want a son or a daughter. They want children. Lord, I pray for your blessing upon those relationships right now. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. We thank you and praise you for caring for us. And we pray all of this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Yeah, so amazing, amazing story there. I want to give you some uh, contact information. I'll just leave it up on the screen as I talk about tomorrow. Again, tomorrow is the Hope Heals Sunday morning gathering. I hope you'll join us tomorrow. We'll be here at 10 a.m. local time. We're going to take communion tomorrow. So make sure that you take out your elements. You want to make sure you have some crackers or some tasty bread. And then get yourself some uh, tang or fruit punch or... Uh, if you've got a real bottle of wine somewhere around, you can open that. And, um, and then we'll be taking the elements. We'll be taking what we call the blood uh, and the body of Jesus tomorrow. And we'll remember our Lord and Savior. Uh, also, we want to remind you that tomorrow we are going to be sharing the story of Jesus in Egypt. And uh, we're going to be looking at the obedience of Joseph as he's told when to return, how to return, where to return, and the significance of that. We know tonight what we learned is this is a prophecy by Hosea who said um, that this is going to be a sign uh, that God is bringing his son out of Egypt, and this is what we call a pictorial prophecy, and it was to fulfill the scripture. And tomorrow we're going to see another prophecy fulfilled. So right after Jesus is born, prophecy is already being fulfilled. And you can't deny that. When you look at Jesus Christ and you wonder, is he really the Messiah? Maybe some of you are asking that question. Is he really the Savior of mankind? We're going to be able to see tomorrow another example of proof, irrefutable proof, that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah in flesh. Okay, everybody, my time is up. I've got to go. It's very late here. I've got to get some beauty sleep, and then I'll be up tomorrow uh, very early to get ready for my sermon, uh, our sermon here. So I invite you back tomorrow. Don't forget, share this. Go to our YouTube uh, channel. Have you been to our YouTube channel? If you haven't been to our YouTube channel at Hope Heals International Ministry, go there and please subscribe to our channel. We want to get more subscriptions. We want everybody to see this. We had a big day yesterday. Over 160 people watched our message yesterday. That's not a big deal. That's about a normal day for us. But we had over 1,000 people uh, be reached. That means 1,000 people have the potential to click on our sermon at any time in the near future. So we're very, very excited about that. And I won't go into the technical side of that, but that's a big deal. And because of people like you, like Karen, one of our neighbors, um, shares, this, shares this broadcast every single night. She's very faithful in doing that. I know a few others do that. Trisha, our graphic artist, also does that. Because of people like you, the Daily Dose of Hope is now reaching 10,000 people a month. That's right. They're, this broadcast will reach about 10,000 people in the next 30 days. So we are very, very excited um, that God is moving in big ways for this ministry. So God bless all of you. And thank you so much for watching. I'll leave you with a little bit of music as, you say good, as I say good night to you tonight. May God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m., right back here at the Hope Hill Sunday Morning Gathering. Bye-bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.